Welcome singer. back to the Jen and Julian podcast. He looks very confused. Bobby, you really see the camera? This episode is brought to you by Postmates. Oh, Guys, you don't have to go to the store. Postmates will go to the store for you. You don't have to go to the restaurant. Postmates will go to the restaurant for you, okay? It is the delivery app. 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They'll deliver whatever you need from the store or restaurant near you. Postmates is giving you $100 of free delivery credit for the first seven days using code Jen and Julian when you download the app. We only use it every day. Check it out, Postmates. Also, guys, Farmer's Dog, whole amazing real ingredients given to your dogs in their dog food is what they want. We've been feeding our dogs Farmer's Dog food for a long time now. Official diet of Stamets. Official and diet beef. of these little guys. Human grade food and recipes that are board certified by board certified veterinary nutritionists. Uh, they approve it. Okay. So you know it's good. Go to thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian to get 50% off your first two weeks of doggy food. They still go freaking nuts for it. It's been, yeah, they do. We've been feeding them Farmer's Dog forever and they still go nuts for because it. Because we used to get like something else that was fresh made like that. Yeah. And they would get tired of it. They and got I was sick like, of it. excuse you. Yeah. <laughs> You're so rude. I just like, and Farmer's Dog too, you don't have to like defrost it. You can put it in the fridge and defrost it. It's so much easier. Yeah. But the other kind, we used to have to like put it in the microwave and like, oh man, it was a production. And it's then so... they just turned their nose up at it. And I'm like, fuck <sighs> off. I know. I couldn't believe when they started to get snotty about that stuff. Fuck off. Right, Marble? Did you see, speaking of Postmates, also, did you see Post Malone tried to post me $11,000 night vision goggles the other day? I did see that. Well, I, what, I was, my first question was where? <laughs> I don't know. Where we see Postmates? I don't know. From? I don't know. Like a Dick's Sporting Goods or something. Yeah. And he was just like, hope this works. And then the company saw it and they just sent it to him for free. But That's so funny. That was really funny. Post Malone can only do Post Malone thing. You talked about it on your radio show, it's right? It's pretty great. Sure did. Yeah. Um, well, so we have a game that we're going to play in a little bit. Right, Momo? You want to play a game? Look at him sitting on a hard surface. No, he's sitting on His a butt is on the hard surface. Momo. I have been working with him to try and continue to get him to I know. To I've, seen, I've seen. I've watched he's around the house. very good boy. Also, forgive my sick voice. I kind of came down with a random cold yesterday, so I'm still dealing with that. But I'm better. Yeah, I don't know what happened. You just woke up and you were like violently ill. I think I aired too I hard. But I was fine. You were fine. And I also, what the weirdest part was, I didn't feel it coming. Normally when I get sick, I, the night before, I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. You get the tingle in your throat and you're like, shit. But it was nothing. I felt fine. I woke up completely sick. Floored. Yeah, I don't know what happened to you. I got nothing. <clears throat> and I still feel nothing. Well, <laughs> stay away from me. Just okay. don't even look at me. Okay. Okay. That's fine. Okay. Uh, That's fine because we're just friends. So. We're just friends. Yeah. I wanted to take some time to talk about uh, last minute trips and Wapsicle um, on the podcast because I feel like this is a, a platform that I can just kind of like freely speak to you guys. Um, I was thinking about making a video on it. I was thinking about making a Twitter post and I think this is kind of the best way to do it because I can just like talk um, and explain the situation and you know where I'm at with, with everything. Um, so a lot of you have been asking when's the next episode of Last Minute Trips and what's happening with Wapsicle. Um, it's been pretty quiet on that end of things, so I understand the the curiosity. Um, and I wanted to let you know that after a lot of thought and uh, two years of doing the show, I, I've made the decision to end Last Minute Trips and step away from the show entirely. Um, and sort of a long story short answer to why is I feel like we accomplished what we wanted to accomplish with the show, or at least I accomplish what I set out to accomplish. Um, and I'll touch back on that. But first, I just, I want to give this massive, huge, huge um, thank you to the supporters of Last Minute Trips. Um, you guys have been so incredibly passionate uh, in supporting the show way beyond any of my expectations of anyone supporting anything I do. Something about last minute trips really struck a chord with a lot of you guys. And, um, it was just one of the most rewarding experiences to make a show, uh, where we traveled to the small towns we did and, and just have the response that, that we constantly got where people were proud to show us their little town or wait in the airports for us or take last minute trips of their own and take pictures and send them to us. And just the whole thing felt, felt so, um, contagious with, with like the positive energy that you guys felt from the show. So, um, 
I'm forever grateful for that. You guys have made it such a rewarding two years of creating uh, and, and traveling and something I never expected to happen. So first and foremost, thank you to all of the supporters for Last Minute Trips. Secondly, I want to thank Colin for for taking this ride with me. Um, it's it's a crazy, crazy ride that I've taken with Colin. And uh, we have a bond that a lot of people don't really ever get to have that sort of bond, um, having uh, experienced what we experienced and traveled how we've traveled and just the time we've spent um, in bizarre situations while filming the show. Great, wonderful, less than wonderful. The, the whole spectrum of of what last minute trips uh, gave to us. We had a lot of a lot of times together, a lot of good times, a lot of tough times. But I'll forever look back on last minute trips and and uh, have fond memories of it with Colin. So thank you to Colin for for doing it with me and making it possible. Um, so in two years of doing the show, um, I've been really close to it, kind of looking at it with a microscope. Um, and I kind of feel like that's, that's how I needed to be to get it, get it to where I wanted it to be, um, to make little improvements and get things right. Um, logistically and creatively, uh, just every single episode, just looking at it so close. And I think sometimes when you're that close and intimate with something, it really takes you stepping back and looking at it from kind of a more general, uh, big picture sense of things and, and asking yourself why you're doing it. Um, and I was able to do that. And, and my reaction is I'm so proud of the show, but I think we've done it. I think we did it. Um, two years ago, we had this idea that we wanted to start a series where we documented truly spontaneous travel. And I think we did it and I'm proud of it. And I think we accomplished more importantly, I think I accomplished what I set out to do with this show. Um, and I think it's time to move on to the next thing. And I think it's a tough decision to make, um, because like anything, you know, that's good or something that you find pleasure in or get rewarded with, um, it's tough to let that go or to move on to the next thing. But I think ultimately the show, um, it stands strongly by itself the way it is. And I don't feel like, uh, creatively, we need to keep doing it. Um, on a more real life sense of things, last minute trips is hella time consuming. Um, what you guys see is a 15 to 25 minute episode of us traveling over the weekend, but behind the scenes, it's a week before that of pre-production. And then you have the weekend of filming on, on the location and traveling. And then you have a full week after that of editing and posting. Um, so that comes down to o over 50% of a month being dedicated to an episode of Last Minute Trips. And, and while I'm so glad that I decided to designate all my time that I had to what we've created so far, um, I just, I can't swing it anymore. And I think um, with all the stuff I have going on in my life, a lot of you guys are very familiar with my life with the Twitch stream and being with Jenna on her videos and making my videos and the podcast, my family and friends, my hobbies, all the things that I don't document on a day-to-day -day basis, um, I just felt... Like amongst other things, uh, I was spreading myself pretty thin and having genuinely sat down with myself and asking myself the question, why am I still doing it? I think I came to the conclusion that I'm proud to leave it where it is. So um, thanks again to everyone who took the ride with us. I hope at some point I'll create something else that generates one-tenth the amount of passion that you guys showed for last minute trips because um, it was truly a very, very rewarding experience. And uh, like I said, I have only fond memories looking back on on my experiences with the show. So that's it. Well, I know that that was a hard decision to come to. It's not like an easy thing that you made overnight, nor Colin. And I'm proud of you because it's always really difficult to end something that you've invested a lot of time and energy and effort into but to recognize when your life is changing or your circumstances are changing or your feelings about the project are changing or anything. And to end something is always very bittersweet. But I'm proud of you for making a decision and deciding to move forward in the future with something else, you know? Yeah, 
Thank you. And I didn't include it in that little spiel, but biggest thank you in the world to Jenna for supporting this project while it lasted and sucking it up all the weekends I would leave and all the weeks I would hide myself into a closet. And edit. <laughs> I know when you say like it was, you know, half a month for every LMT, it's really true. And I would just say goodbye to you basically. Like the week before I would say goodbye to you because you're like busy. I'm not there. Yeah. yeah. You're, you're physically, mentally, emotionally not here. Yeah. And then the weekend you're physically gone and yeah. also incredibly busy. And those hours are insane. You guys are waking up at the crack of dawn and doing that and filming all day and then, you know, doing it for three or four days in a row, which is fine. You can push through that. But then the real struggle begins that editing week, that turnaround time of having the complete episode finished by Friday. Yeah. And I would just say goodbye to Julian all week. Just say goodbye to him, you yeah. know. And it's it's hard. I know it's hard on me. It's hard on Rome. <laughs> yeah. And we would we would sort of just like say goodbye to you guys. You, but you, you, know? you and Rome, you were both incredibly supportive. And I just want to specifically thank you guys, you and Rome, like mm. for 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 letting us. Hey, do I had the the easy end of the deal. I had three dogs to watch. Rome had two dogs and a toddler That's to watch. True. That's true. <laughs> Shouts out Rome. Shouts out Rome. Um. And I feel like a question that is probably going to come at me after this is uh, what's happening with Wafsigal. And I think just kind of the easy answer is early on, we we created Wafsigal, me and Colin, as like our dual company with this goal of like making it a production company with this vision in mind where we could shoot production stuff and we could vlog it while we did is kind of a unique thing. And it very quickly just became last minute trips. Like Wafsigal equals last minute trips. And I think most people know that, you know, there was a one-off thing we did here and there. Uh, but for the most part, that defined Wafsicle. So that last minute trips and Wafsicle both are, be putting, are being put uh, to an end at this point. And again, like, you know, I, I wish Colin the absolute best. He's living in Austin, Texas now, and he's he's out there doing his thing. He's directing music videos. He's got his podcast. And I, I know he's going to create great stuff. And I... And I, I encourage all of you guys to wish him the best as well. And thank you again for taking the, the journey with me. Um, but yeah, to kind of get ahead, the answer is Wapsicle equals last minute trips and both of them are coming to an end. So um, that is it. And I hope I've answered the questions that you guys have had and asked me for a while now. Um, I'm ready to uh, move on and, and create something cool again and on to the next thing in the most you know, positive and thankful, grateful way possible. Well, and you'll, you'll need to just explore what you feel like doing, because I know that that creating that show, it's a scratch that you had to, you know, film things that were pretty that aren't a vlog necessarily, or, you know, yeah, use your drone, <laughs> get some cool shots of things that you don't usually see. And I know personally, when you guys first started the show, there was that part of you that was just dying to travel the country and that that was a really cool thing. I feel like everybody at some point has that itch to just like, I can't wait to get out to other places that aren't my backyard to go and film or hang out or yeah, totally. explore, find myself, whatever it is. And then as time goes by, that definitely starts to take a toll on you, <laughs> you know, and it's just a lot. Like the travel aspect of it is a ton. Yeah. And I can only hope for you that you find something that fulfills you creatively as that project did without some of the, you know, traveling that was so awful. Not awful, but like it's time consuming. It's a lot, you know? Yeah. I hope that you can find something that fulfills you creatively that's not quite as time consuming, I guess. Yeah. You know? Ideally, that that would that would be the case, yeah. Yeah, you, you fucking sleep in cold boats on on uh, yeah, Lake I can't Superior. Yeah, slept in a boat. Sleep I can't in tiny you did trailers that. and we, man, I'll just say one thing is like I have a lot of memories from that show that I never thought I would have in my life of doing things. I've had a lot of times of you calling me being like, "We there's no food, there's nothing," and I'm just like begging Julian to pack something for the airplane and he's like, "No, I'll be fine. I'll get some food at the airport." Like a celiac vegan going into places of the country where all you can eat are french fries, which is fine. But like, I don't know if you've ever eaten french fries for days in a row because I certainly have. You start to just feel like start, a shell of a human. <laughs> you don't feel you don't, any energy you getting just created. Feel so bad. Like uh, just so bad. Yeah. 
I always have that, like, when I'm on the road and there's nothing, like, we're traveling, fries and wine is always, like, a good... And it's great for, like, two a days. Night. No, like, a night, it's fine. And yeah. then the next day, it's not fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm not okay. <laughs> well, that, you know... Shout, if you want to take a last-minute trip and, and end up in a trailer park in the middle of nowhere, just... And you're vegan, just... Chips are your friend, okay? That's all I'll say. I watched you try to cook a baked potato over an open flame Uh, for like five minutes, though. Yeah, Colin Colin told me that that wasn't going to work, and I still tried it. I like stabbed a potato with a stick, and I held it over an open flame, and I tried to take a bite after, and he made me spit it out because he says apparently you can get sick from eating raw potato, I guess. I don't know. But... Anyway, thanks we, for sharing, <clears throat> Julie. We're th- proud of you. Thank you, and thank you for allowing me to uh, to talk about it on the podcast. I think there, there's every once in a while some things happen in your life that you just want to sit and talk about and uh, clear the air and kind of explain things to you. So I think that is also one of the great things about the podcast. Yeah. Another great thing about the podcast is playing games, which we have one here. We've only played twice before, <laughs> only twice. You guys always request this, though. Yeah, I was looking through our old episodes and looking through the comments of them, and you guys really wanted us to not even get started on more things to rant about, so... Good and bad, though. Good and bad. So we created a list, actually, with the help of you guys. Um, we What I've been doing when I need suggestions for the podcast is I've been going on our Instagram, at Jenna Julian, and I've been doing the little poll fu- or the question function mm-hmm. where you can submit your answers anonymously and I can read all of them. So you guys helped make all of these happen. So thank you for that. So we're going to each take a turn pulling out of the cup something that we can't even get started about. Don't even get me started. Don't even get me started. Uh, and we also, we also said at one point, right, like we can, we can not steal, but we can gift one of them. I like the steal. You like the steal function? Okay. So basically if I pick something that Jenna really wants to rant about, she can steal it once and I can do the same. But Uh, otherwise you're forced to rant about whatever is. You have to rant about it and it can be a positive rant or a negative rant, right? Like you can. Some of them can go either way. They can go either way. Depending who pulls it. You want to go first? Sure. All right. Don't look. I'm not looking. I hate how you don't fold these. I hate it. They're not folded. Oh, don't even get me started on why Virgos are better than Aries. Uh, I'm so glad I didn't get that one. I mean, just off the top, these are facts. Like, this isn't even an opinion at all. Virgos are better than Aries. Basically, every sign in the zodiac is better than aries this could say (laughs) fucking anything and it's still true still a fact i forget do i get to argue back you can if you want okay go on julian you are a tornado aries are wild there's literally jokes on the internet about people holding in their babies while they're giving birth so that they don't have an aries because have you met an aries y'all are fucking wild we we provide energy that no one else knows how to provide Oh my God. It's like starting things and never finishing them. A bunch of energy moving in one direction that that is just like, it's like a, it's like a tree branch. It's forever growing out. And then just like a little shoot this way, 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 always going in one fucking direction. Just never like actually growing a nice, thick, lush tree of careful plant energy. It's just like forever forwards. So I'm healthy and I'm growing. Oh my God. Right? No. no. And I'm providing. No. You're stubborn. You're a tornado of energy. I'm not that stubborn. You're kind of stubborn. You're more stubborn than I am. But when I'm right, yeah. You're more. Because I'm right. You're way more stubborn than me. When I'm right. Always. That's not true. <laughs> okay. All right. 90% of the time. Because I don't argue about something unless I'm right. <laughs> okay. Fine. But how about this? Right? Say we're in a time crunch and we need to do something fast. I'm not going to tell Jenna to do it. I'm going to do it because I know that I can make it happen fast. Yeah, if we tell Jenna ha- yeah, to do it. Yeah, you can make anything happen fast, but I'll at least make sure it gets done correctly. Sometimes it, you it's better to be quality quick. You sacrifice quality constantly. Sometimes it's better to be quick than none at all. That's not true. So much of like just life is better to like make sure you get it done right one time than bad fast seven times. But having having... In your brain that you need to 
organize no, no, and plan no. every little thing in your life. Yes. That is paralyzing sometimes. It's not. It's absolutely No, it's paralyzing. good for dogs. It's good for children. It's good for people. People respond well to structure and schedules and planning and understanding. It gives sometimes. people a sense of peace. Sometimes. And, and, and like routine in order to have that. But you need a little bit of craziness thrown no. in. No. Yeah, you do. You never yeah, do. You do. No, you, do. you literally no, never babe, do. You do. You no, do. the only time that serves a purpose is when it's funny. That's it. That's the only purpose no, it no, serves. No, 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 no. That's not true. Yes, it is. <laughs> the only time I can think when your Aries energy is a positive is when you're so hungry. I don't want to be around you because you're so miserable and so nasty that you can cook something within five seconds to feed yourself. That is the only time your tornado energy is a positive. I have other examples. They seem to be escaping me at the moment. <laughs> But I guess I'll concede this argument. Do you know how many times we've like put something together or built something? You read none of the directions. You start doing it Suggestion wrong. Suggestion pamphlet. You never, ever, ever learn your lesson and just like try and do it correctly. So it's not... I don't think you need to go by every rule in the world. I think you can sometimes just do things. Rules aren't always bad. Sometimes rules are They're there. They're also not always good. <sighs> Boy. They're not always good. Sometimes they prevent creativity and spreading your butterfly wings. That's fine. When the creativity is like contained in, in a manner that makes any creativity level of sense. Creativity doesn't get contained. You can't put creativity in a, in a Tupperware. You got to let it go. So that went well. We'll go now. <laughs> <laughs> what do you got? Weather shaming. Don't even get me started. On weather shame. Whatever you say, I'm going to agree with you. Just because you decided to grow up in the fucking tundra <laughs> doesn't mean that people who live in less cold or extreme climates are unable to feel cold or want to put on a sweater or the entire city of Los Angeles is somehow laughed at if someone wants to put on any sort of outer garment. A hat. Don't even get me started. Just because you grew up in Wisconsin or wherever the fuck, where you're just miserable, so fucking miserable, all winter long, yeah. because it's so cold that when someone from LA says, hmm, it was 50 today, I put on a sweater, you feel the need to just like go after their throat because they are not allowed to feel cold. Oh, they're much warmer than I am, so therefore they cannot be cold. That's not true at all. Everything's relative, okay? I didn't, as much as I want to fault you for growing up in the freezing place that you grew up in, I can't, which means you also can't fault me for growing up where I grew up, okay? I didn't choose it. I was raised here, okay? I was raised in a place where 40 is fucking freezing, okay? Whereas you might be raised in a place where 40 <laughs> is the most beautiful day of the year. That sucks for you and it's great for me, but that doesn't make it so I can't be cold and put on a sweater when it's 40 degrees. Damn, get on. Don't you fucking laugh at me when I say I'm cold. Oh, he's from LA. Dude, he's so cold at 50 degrees. Yeah, I'm cold. I'm cold. I'm cold. I only ever make fun of people that say that they're cold when they know that they're going to a snowy location and bring like a jean jacket. That's different. That's not weather That's shaming. That's being, being ill prepared. Stupid. That's being ill prepared. I will make fun of someone for complaining that they're cold when they are not prepared for cold weather. Lol, people from LA be like, I'm cold and it's a beautiful... No, Julian will say it like in a vlog. Oh, we're, you know, we're going to bring the dogs inside. It's kind of cold outside. And everyone's like, I'm standing in 23 feet of snow. You don't know what cold is. All my limbs are currently being frostbitten. You say you're cold in LA. Why are you, why are you subjecting yourself to that? <laughs> Why is that so, why is a point of pride that you're freezing your ass off every day? Oh, I'm literally my whole house is literally snowed in. I live in a snow globe. Great. I don't care. That's that's your life. Yeah. I'm living in LA where sometimes it can be a little chilly and I want to put on a fucking sweater and not get laughed at for it. Don't even get me started. Look how angry I am at this. All right. I think we're done with that one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good rant. Good rant. Thank you. I wish you folded these. Hmm. Oh, don't even get me started on buying bed size blankets to use as living room throws. Here comes a positive This rant. is a life hack that I learned from just going to Target 
and using my brain. So you know how they sell throws in stores? And even if they say oversized throw, like, you know, for your living room, for when you're just on the couch, they are never as big as you want them to be. They just are not. You know what I mean? So what I started doing is you go to a bedding store, Bed Bath Beyond, Target, wherever you feel like you want to buy some bedding. And you know those like where your flat sheet is and between your comforter and your flat sheet, sometimes they sell a blanket that's like fleece or other materials. Just coziness. That is queen sized or king sized buy that and use that as your living room blanket it is the most underrated life hack ever when did we start doing that well i think when i started buying those blankets like in big bear because there were no blankets and the only thing they had was like a queen size throw yeah or blanket and i was like this is actually fantastic because it's big enough for two people to sit under or you and several dogs and so now at this point we have like four king size blankets downstairs and it is just the best thing in the world cuz my brother's like 65 when he comes over if you think i'm going to give him a living room throw you're fucking nuts it'll never cover his whole body you give him a king size blanket to sit under on the couch life changed Life better. It's an underrated house hack that I feel like other people don't use because maybe they make the throws more decorative or something that suits your aesthetic. Fine, have a couple of them, but I'm not going to sit under them because it's not going to keep me warm and it's not going to cover my feet and I don't want it. You know, this this rant here is reminding me of when I was a kid and I'd be at my dad's house and in the living room we had a bunch of like really cozy but really, really fucking small. tiny blankets that when you're cold, yes, I can be cold. I grew up in LA. I'm allowed to be cold. When you're cold, you have to like tuck your knees in and like really scrunch into a ball for it to cover you. Yeah. But I guess I like, I loved those blankets, right? My stepmom would buy the softest blankets and I love them. They're super soft. They're just small. But they're so small. Yeah. And so I don't know when we started doing it, but we have these huge ass like fleece blankets downstairs in the living room. So anytime we want to cozy up, it's just like this massive, you're just covered in warmth. Yeah. It's amazing. It's the best. Um, you read one more. Okay. Okay. Go for it. <clears throat> please read it. Wait, Julian. Just read it. Julian. Please. Could you just read it? <laughs> no, this is a trap. No, read it. You no. have to read it. That's part of the game. This read is it. why, this read is it. why read you it. didn't read fold it. Read them. It. Read it. Read it. Read don't it. even get me started on you and your segues and how you don't fold these. Read the People card. who don't use Postmates. Insert segue. Oh, you know, I'm going to steal this one. Don't even get me started on people you don't use post Postmates. What are you doing? Going to Julian. the store for one thing or going through a drive through or going to Chipotle. It's sticking out and you read that. Listen, what you guys got to do is you got to download the Postmates app, okay? And any day of the year, 24 hours a day, there are options, okay, in your area for Postmates to deliver some delicious food, some supplies from the market, some ingredients to cook with, whatever it may be, some soap, deodorant, nobody's judging, especially not Postmates. They'll deliver it right to your door. It is such a great app, okay? Use code Jen and Julian, get $100 of free delivery credit for the first seven days when you when you use that code. So check that out. Use that code. They also recently sponsored the Twitch stream. So shouts out Postmates. But this is literally a service. It is as it is as integrated in our lives as any sponsor we've ever had. Mm-hmm. We use Postmates all the time. There's always times where you get too busy with work, family, whatever it is, you just don't have time to run to the store or run to the restaurant and pick up food, okay? Postmates does it for you. Get on the Postmates app. They deliver food for you. I mean, it is so seamless. You see them on the map. They can call you, text you. It is a really, really pain-free process. And you know what? If you if you need to like just knock it out of your pajamas one day, just use Postmates, okay? And then you don't have to. It's amazing. What? I'm just mad at you. What? Don't even get me started. Well, something that you can't Postmate is Farmer's Dog. It is whole, delicious ingredients that your dogs love, but specifically made for your dog. So basically, the Farmer's Dog is a service where you log on to their website, thefarmersdog.com slash Jen and Julian. You fill out a brief questionnaire about your pet, what they like to eat, how big they are, what their eating habits are, their eating schedules, and you fill out a bunch of questions. And so Farmer's Dog takes that information, formulates a meal plan, and sends you customized meals prepackaged in these wonderfully convenient pouches to where you freeze all of them except for a couple. You keep them in the fridge. Then when your dog's ready to eat, you just cut open the pouch, 
put a little in their bowl and they're eating. It is the most convenient thing ever. You know you're feeding your dogs real whole ingredients in their food, not fillers, not processed nonsense, no nonsense, no artificial nonsense. Like you're feeding your dogs what you'd want to eat, right? They want to eat just what you want to eat. It's whole food, uh, human grade ingredients. Check it out, thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian. Our dogs lose their minds for it every single night and morning. They just lose their tiny minds um, because it is really just good food for your dog. So check it out, thefarmersdog.com slash Jenna Julian. 50% off your first two weeks of using The Farmer's Dog. Thank you, sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. All right, ready? You're a troll. Oh, okay. Don't even get me started. On how Peach learned how to grab food out of the pantry. Oh! Peach decided that one day, if we don't like actually lock the pantry, she nuzzles her tiny little nose in between the doors, opens it, and... Oh, sorry. And there's like a lower shelf where we keep some of our food. We keep like some chips. We keep like our canned food. And just some random stuff, like our pasta. It's mostly the chips. It's mostly the chips. So there's like a lower shelf where it's, she's tall enough to get up to. So we've been finding these bags of chips like scattered throughout the house. And we're like, holy we're shit. Trouble. She's literally learned how to go into the pantry. We are in trouble. Take our chips. Like just help herself to a snack like a fucking people. Listen to Don't me. even get me no, started. No, you don't even oh. get me started because if I had pulled that, you know what I would say? This is a good thing because I personally, okay. whenever I go to the pantry, I close the doors after I'm done with it, right? Okay. I think it's good practice for if ever we get a rescue greyhound, which I'm sure we'd love to get someday, and for them or for anything else in the future. When you're done with the food, you close those doors for bugs or, God forbid, a raccoon or something came in. You to close the door. Yeah, close fine. off the food. I'm glad that she learned how to get those chips off there because yeah. it will teach you to stop leaving doors open and food where people and little things can grab food. All right, Don't even well, get me started. It's a good thing. I guess this one was... This one was uh... And if we get a big dog, you're in for a world of hurt, Julian. You can't be mad at her. The food was there, ready for her to grab. What if you left the pantry snout. open? I don't leave the pantry open. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, I tried. Just like I don't leave the refrigerator open. <laughs> I only do that sometimes. <laughs> I only do it sometimes. That's not true. All right. You know what? That one... That one... It's okay. Sometimes you just gotta... Yeah, sometimes you gotta admit defeat. <sighs> I don't like this one. Okay, skip it. Do, do another one. <sighs> All right. I'm, I want to gift this one to you because this didn't apply to me. When your parent doesn't understand, you can't pause an online game. Oh, There were no online games for me Don't even get me started. When I don't even get parents. me started, mom, specifically mom. When I'm growing up, <laughs> all right, and I'm playing Halo with my friends and we're playing a Xbox Live, you know, talking all sorts of shit to each other <laughs> on our little stupid headsets. You can't walk in the garage and say, hey, I need you to pause your game so you can do your laundry. No, mom. There needs to be some sort of humane order to this. I can't pause an online game because that would be pausing the game for 15 other people who are also playing with me <laughs> who don't have to do stupid laundry. I mean, I understand this as an adult, but no one is telling me to pause my online this game This is something that to this day, my mom probably doesn't understand. Like if we, if, if she comes over to my house, mm -hmm. right, and I'm playing in PUBG or Siege or whatever, and she comes in and says, I need you to pause that game. Not that she can really tell me that because I'm a fucking adult. I don't have to pause the game anymore. <laughs> but she still, like that is a concept that I think she still doesn't understand. Mm -hmm. And that's that's just how it's like she's never understood it. She just thinks that, oh, you don't want to pause it. No, I can't pause it. Mm -hmm. I, I either concede and just leave my Go character AFK, AFK and yeah. die or you wait till the end like a normal person, do your laundry after the game is over, and right. then you come back and start, you know, owning when you're back, when you're done. But don't tell me to pause so the game. you couldn't tell your mom? You couldn't explain that to your mom when you oh, were Oh, I kid? did. But she just thinks it's like, I remember yelling like, I can't pause the game. But her thinking like I'm just making excuses mm. so I can keep playing. Mm. Well, I wonder why. You, you, you're an Aries full of excuses. My mom's an Aries too. It's a recipe for disaster. <laughs> well, 
you know, I was also I've also played many video games at many friends' house growing up, and all of their parents seem to have the same problem that mine did. Well, that, because uh, they understand video games as like a game that you can pause. They don't understand the the concept. I'm playing of online, online with other people. I can't pause it. Other people are depending on me right now. Yeah, I can't. I'm playing with other other people. It's like it's like if you played football, I want one. And and your mom comes in and says, "Hey, I need you to pause this game." Do I tell all 20 other people on the field to just like pause what they're doing? <laughs> no, this is a group activity. Don't even give me. It started. didn't apply to me. Don't the only even... games that were around when I was a kid were single player or stuff like that. RPGs. Yeah, or like Nintendo 64, where you can pause. Don't even get me started. Yeah, yeah. Don't it wasn't even get a thing. I'm thankful though. Are you gonna play Halo when it comes out? Yeah. I'm so excited to play oh. Halo on PC. On PC, dude. <clears throat> Go. Oh, this one's also for you. Don't even get me started on businesses in 2019 that are cash slash check only. The reason why I said this one is also for Julian is because every, what, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday? Monday. Monday. He uh, rolls with his coach in jujitsu private, and he's he only takes a check. I don't understand it. Like Venmo is so easy to download. And I've even told him about Venmo. I've been like, I'm like hey, have you heard of You only like, order checks to pay your coach. And I have a book of checks <laughs> to only write a check to my coach for, for jujitsu. And it's like so silly. And that's not even like the worst. Like that's, you know, I think he's, he's like, uh, what's this Venmo? Is this safe? You know, yeah, I think yeah, it's yeah. like, I, it's a fair, you know, hesitation. Totally. But at the same time, I always think like, I'm, I, every time I write the check, I can't believe I'm writing a fucking check. Mm-hmm. Like, I just can't believe I'm writing a check in today's day and age. Um, but even worse than that, like, because that's not necessarily a business, right? That's just one person who I right. pay for a well, service. So I think about all the nail salons that I go to, and yeah. they, they only accept tips and cash, yes. which used to be the status quo for, like, a restaurant. You would leave cash on the table yes. for your waitress. Yes. But imagine if all restaurants just decided, nah, man, it's way too risky risky to to let people tip in on their card or whatever or everything would be a shit show you you'd have 18 people line longs at every atm everywhere yeah also you have people walking around now especially with the new apple announcement like apple pay is getting sleeker and more convenient than ever most people just have their phones right. if they even have a credit card that's debatable but say say someone was like paying for everything with their phone yeah. and they, they literally can't get to an atm with it and they right. can't tip in cash because it's just their phone like Come on, dude, wake up. Get one of those little readers, the little square yeah, I things. Don't, I don't even carry my like debit card with me to go get cash. I I, I know. I stopped I know. doing that. I know that. Because like I put all of my expenses your, onto one card. Which is a credit card. Right. Yeah. But then like I used to only use my debit card all the time for everything because I was like, you know, super careful with my money and wanted to never, ever, ever spend something I didn't have. But I also wasn't building any credit. Like yeah. I've since switched over to a different <clears throat> type of system, but I don't, ca- because I'm not a person that goes and gets cash all the time, yeah. I don't carry my debit card anymore because it just makes my accounting more difficult to put things on different cards yeah, all the time. Yeah, no. So, I think a lot of people are in that same yeah. situation. So I stopped carrying my debit card. So like even if I'm out in the world and someone's like, can you, you know, tip in cash or whatever, I'm like, fuck, Julian, do you have any cash? Because sometimes Julian has cash in his car or whatever. I never have any cash. I never have any cash. Yeah, I try to keep emergency stashes in my car and my wallet. And but like, think like, of, that, like but... we like to go to those little fruit stands and just buy some fruit and they yeah. are on, like cash only. Yeah. Like, I imagine it wouldn't be too difficult for them to set up one of those little square readers well, two or things. to just take a Venmo from two their phone. Two things I want to say. Two things I want to say. The fruit carts. I understand why businesses are cash only. I'm just saying, I would maybe consider yes. in the future. I would say, if there is an exception to this rule, it's like street meat and fruit carts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, those guys, they're, it's an old school thing. That's fine. For cash sure. only. If you're, if you, if you're going out of the house with, any shadow of uh, any small chance that you're going to use that service, you know you're going to bring cash, right? Totally. That's okay. But the imagine other thing I how say, much their business would grow if they also offered a way for you to just Venmo or use a, a little square reader. One thing or I will say: their about, businesses would explode. Those yes. people that are running in the park, they are not running with a bunch of cash in their pocket. Who the hell goes for a jog with a bunch of cash in their pocket? I, I agree. I think it would behoove all these small business owners to have any sort of little chip or card reader or right. whatever. I, w- I do want to say, though, to be fair, okay, Venmo 
on certain credit cards takes a fee. And Square, right. and so on all purchases, PayPal. takes a, a fat fucking fee. Mm-hmm. And PayPal, unless it's for a family or friend, takes a fee. Right. So I don't want to uh, diminish you know, th- that effect of using some, some sort of service or Absolutely. item like that. Because but I know for a lot people, of people, like those fees add up and they're like, this isn't worth it. Right. So I get that. But uh, isn't, the, isn't the, I know with PayPal, but isn't there a way for it to, so that the, the user, the one that's buying the service or paying for the whatever is paying the fee? Because I think that there's plenty of people that are okay paying an extra fee on top of whatever for the convenience of not having cash. Yes. Well, I think I think with Venmo, it's like that, right? So if I wanted to Venmo you with using a certain credit card, it would let me know while I was picking that credit card that it's going to take a certain fee from mm-hmm. my purchase, not from yeah. the, the recipient. Right. With Square, it's different. Square takes just like a, a across the board fee from any merchant who's accepting payment using Square. Mm. And they've been like that for a long time. And I think that's really kind of like made a lot of people not want to use Square yeah. because of that fee because it really is not a tiny fee and it adds up and this and that. Um, but I also know that like it becomes kind of confusing for tax purposes, right? Like totally. if, you're, if you're using Venmo, right, and you're paying someone via Venmo for like say a haircut, um, at the end of the year, you have to go through and like maybe that looks wrong in the eyes of the IRS or whatever if it's like a f- family or friend type of payment mm. through an app like that. I don't yeah, know but what not I'm that, Not that, you I'm know, claiming your... It. I'm just playing, playing devil's advocate. Claiming really. cash is pretty difficult as well. I don't know. Whatever. I th- But I do think at the heart of the argument, it is funny that your coach and probably so many other people and services still only take a check or cash when they could just as easily set up yeah. a Venmo. True. Okay, don't even don't even get me started on pineapple on pizza. What? Uh, it's what? delicious. Oh, you silly boy! It's still, it's really good. It's not really good. It is. It's not really good. It is. You're wrong. It's not good. Your taste buds deceive you. You're lying. Your body's lying Why? to you. Why? Because I like a complex flavor profile. Oh, and wow. It's delicious. Wow, I'm so blown away at your flavor you profile. Had, you put wait, wait, fruit wait, on time, pizza. Time, hey, you relax. Have you ever had grilled pineapple? Yeah, it's gross. It's delicious. It's gross. What's wrong with you? I need my my pineapple to be fresh and juicy and crisp. What I don't about want grilled plantains? Cook. Uh, man, a little less gross. Not not my favorite still. So it sounds like you're just against warm fruit. Yeah, why problem. would I want warm fruit? It's, it's good. supposed to be cold. No, it's good. It's supposed to be room temperature or cold. I don't want warm fruit. That's insane. That's insanity. No, it's not. Where in nature does fruit get warm? The grilled watermelon is that a thing? There's no grills in the I'll jungle. Eat it. You eat watermelon, you take it out of where it's growing and you take a bite of it. That's how it's meant to be eaten. Now, I don't know if watermelons grow in the jungle. Where do watermelons grow? <laughs> not in the jungle. That's not my point. Uh, I don't like warm fruit. That's actually, thank you. That, that's the, whole, the root of you. your problem. That's the root of my problem. Well, I think I think fruit is, I, I'm all for like mixing like uh, the cranberry salad you made with like olive oil and cranberry. That's like, literally warm fruit. Okay, but look, can I just finish here? By the time it's on my plate, nothing's warm. You cook it, sure, but by the time it's on my plate, I, I'm. My point what about is, a I'm okay. Apple, hold apple on, pie, hold on. My point any is, pie my with point, fruit filling. My point, That's my point. all hot fruit. My point is, I'm okay with having savory and sweet flavors mixed, mm. especially when it comes to fruit and dishes. Something about pineapple being cooked in any capacity just grosses me the fuck out. Pineapple upside down cake. I don't know what that is. And frankly, I don't care to know. What about those cupcakes with the pineapple on them? Those are cooked. What? What cupcakes with the pineapple on them? We had those. Remember Kat gave us a bunch of cupcakes with pineapple on them? Uh, it was cooked. It, it, the memory evades me. I just, what, what about like a, a cake with raspberry in it? Cooked? I, I'm saying specifically pineapple is gross when it's cooked. Just so revolting and soft Oh, and like, why, dude? It's such a great fruit. I'm sorry, but you're it's wrong. You're not allowed to eat pies anymore. You're not allowed to eat pies why? anymore. Why? I'm, I'm, because I'm, you're ranting about how you don't like hot fruit and it belongs in cold or room I'm actually, I'm actually. Nope, you're not allowed to eat pies anymore. Well, sorry, Julie. I'm zeroing in on pineapple, not fruit. I never said warm fruit is gross. Well, actually, I did. I yelled that. Um, mainly pineapple is disgusting. I just think any warm pineapple should be banned. But, you know, if you like pineapple on your pizza, oh that's fine. Just post me. It. I'm sorry, Use but you're wrong. Julian. You're so wrong. It's one of the most passionate, <gasps> it's one of the most, like, passionate, debated subjects ever. Okay, go ahead. 
Don't even get me started. This is one that could have gone either way if I picked it or you. On electric scooters. <laughs> you hate those things. I don't like to go fast. I don't like to go fast. I don't like electric scooters. We saw two kids in the park the other day, both on one. They were ready to either kill themselves or kill somebody else. Both, probably. They were going to take a spill. They were there going was no other so out- There was no other fast. outcome. So here in Los Angeles, as yeah. well as many other cities, you can sort of rent through an app a little electric scooter. And they have super, birds. They have I limes, get that. They, yeah. But I get all of the convenience and like renting something and then being able to leave it somewhere. Like I yeah. think the idea is super rad. Yeah. I just don't know who was like, yeah, electric scooter. They go so fast. They don't people, go that fast. People ride them wherever the fuck they want. That's <laughs> even in places where it says, "Don't ride those fucking things here." Okay, it's an it's a, a nuisance to children and dogs and people. Oh come it's on, dangerous. kids love it. Kids love Shroud it. Shroud literally needed surgery on his elbow because he fucking tumbled okay. off one. He no, is no 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 no. no. They're that's bad. Ex- that's- They're dangerous. Okay, and we know one person that got hurt. It's only going to get worse from here. You don't have to wear a helmet. They, they go too fast, so it Shroud, makes me nervous. Shroud did not use a bird okay, or a lime to hurt okay, his sorry. shoulder. This says electric. Elbow. This says electric scooter. Hold up, hold up. He bought. Oh, he right. has That's an electric. That's not the argument. I don't... Okay, but no, you can't just you can't just mention an example. Okay, and then go say, ahead, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. let me just dispute that one little micro argument. Okay, Shroud is is different because he bought a supercharged electric scooter <laughs> that goes like fifty uh, or sixty. It's still an electric scooter. Okay. But not the type we're talking about here. Fine. We're talking about the limes and the birds. Fine. Okay. But I'm talking about all electric scooters. Okay. They're not a problem. They just aren't there yet. Okay. The law hasn't caught up yet. Nobody knows where you're supposed to ride them or where you can't ride them. Right on the fucking thing it says, do not ride on sidewalk. Yet what? You're supposed to ride it in the middle of the street without it's a confu- helmet? It's confusing. Exactly. It is a big it's toss dangerous. up. Well, it's not dangerous. I don't want to take one. I don't like going fast. I would rather walk. Thank you very much. I would quite literally not rather walk. I would rather scoot. Very fast Good and get to you. where I'm going and get hit by a car. I've never in my life on that on a scooter gotten hit by a car. Only on my bike have I gotten hit by a car. The car was parked and it was my fault. Yeah, but you had a helmet on. Did I? Yeah. But you what? don't have to wear a helmet to wear one to, no. to ride on one no. of those things. No, it's so dangerous. Yeah, it is dangerous, but it's at your own risk. Well, I think people... The other be- day, I had to run errands out in the it's world. It's not your... Okay? It's, no, no. I it's not your... Don't even get me started. It's my town. don't even get me started. Don't even get me started on you <laughs> getting started. <laughs> okay, fine. I'll, we'll get started. It's your don't get me Good, started. Good. Your turn. <laughs> uh, don't even get me started on people going crazy over Netflix, every Netflix original. Oh, that's the T right there. I think that's yours. <laughs> So I came up with a theory that whenever things come out on Netflix, people generally sort of like lose their fucking minds over shit because they have a subscription to Netflix and it's new. So they watch it and they think it's amazing. And then I also feel like I whenever someone tells me like, oh, you got to see this movie or oh, you got to see this thing. Like unless it's like a universal overwhelming sort of like I don't I don't watch a lot of movies in the first place. Yeah. Mainly because of this reason. There's always somebody telling me, it's so fucking good. Dude, it's so good. You got to fucking watch it. I loved it. It's so fucking good. And then I watch it and I'm disappointed. And now I'm angry at my friend for hyping that shit up. Or I'm angry at that person online that was ranting and raving about it. Like, yeah, sure, it's okay. But I feel like there's a phenomenon where people just have a Netflix subscription. So anything new they think is the best fucking thing that's ever came out. And I just disagree. Well, because it's high production, it's free. It's usually starring someone pretty important, and so they're or used. Not. Well, or not, but they're used to paying for a content like that in a theater or on on demand or something. So if the fact that you're getting it for free in your Netbox dashboard, Netflix dashboard, is uh, is like, oh my god, this is free. It's incredible. But it's not. Most of it's just okay. I think people are being clouded by the fact that it's free on Netflix, so they can't adequately like judge that's what i'm saying for what it is like i I don't agree i think it's just okay a lot of the shit that comes out on netflix i'll 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 give it an example i I agree with you it's not your don't even get me started it's my don't even get me started but i agree with you i want to give an example okay go ahead that we went through recently is love death and robots 
Yeah. Uh, I mean, all we, I mean, first of all, I want to say I enjoyed it. It was really well done. The animation absolutely blew my fucking mind. Yeah. Like some, some of the episodes, episodes were really cool, like very stylistic, nice, cool stories. Yeah. Cool show idea. But people really made it sound like it was the fucking best thing since sliced bread. Yeah. The animated version just of Black Mirror. Black Mirror times two, but animated, but in small form content. It's the first of its kind. Everyone just like, Oh my God, it's amazing. And like, it was great, but it's like, there's no need to hype it up that much because it truly wasn't that good. It was good. It was really good, but it wasn't as good as people were describing it. I was expecting to be like, I was expecting the way I felt after I watched it too. It was very not safe for work. Yeah. But I was expecting how I felt when I watched Black Mirror for the first time when you're just like a little bit mind fucked. Yeah. I didn't get like that. Exactly. For Love, Death and Robots. It made me think it was cool, but. Yeah. That's how I felt when people were hyping up Pen15. They were like, oh my God, it's so nostalgic. Like, it's so good. It's so funny. And like the first couple episodes, I was like, yeah, I get it. And it's a little nostalgic. But I also, this was not my experience whatsoever. I, you know, I'm not really 100% relating, but I like the nostalgia. I like yeah. the idea of adult characters playing middle schoolers. It's funny. But then it just completely lost its fucking charm. And I just didn't fucking like it. And I was like, why are people f- hyping the shit out of this? Yeah. The the joke is tired and old. And some of it was just like so fucking unnecessary. So fucking unnecessary. And I shut it off and I was like, that's a fucking enough of that. <laughs> Goodbye. Shouldn't have got you started. You could have done it for two seconds. But no, you had to make an entire episode about the weirdest, grossest masturbation shit that I... I who is relating to that being like, yes, dude. Sure. What the fuck? <laughs> I was all set and yeah, I shut it off and I, I said, fuck you, Twitter. That's enough. That's the last time I'm listening to you say uh, this thing on Netflix is so fucking good. Fuck off. Shut up. I'm done. <laughs> I was eating dinner. Yeah, that was. Sometimes I just like to like have a little escape, right? I just want to watch something yeah. and relax and be able to eat a meal with it. Like how you feel about The Office. Are there ever really points in The Office where you're like, oh man, I really got to shut off this show because I can't watch it. Like I just want like a nice relaxing show to watch. Yeah, no, I hear you. You know? Yeah. Or if there's fucking graphic content, at least give me a warning. Say, don't eat your food to this. Maybe instead of the are you still watching feature, we can get a... Don't eat any food to this feature. <laughs> that can, would be way more helpful. I'll talk to my guy at Netflix. Thank you. Day drinking outside as an adult. Don't get me started. I don't feel passionate about this one. Do you want to take it? or No, just that I can't do it anymore. I get way too tired. Oh, so don't even get me started on... You know, well, at this point in my life, I feel like if I'm just laying outside for long enough, I get really tired. You know, just like being outside, I get tired. Add alcohol in there, and it's just nap city. Day drinking, when you were a young man, easy. Could do easy, it. Easy. Could dude. do it. Not anymore. Not though. anymore. Not anymore. Weekday weddings. Oh, yikes. Don't even get me started. Oh, yikes. On making your wedding during the week? What? Whose idea was that? Well, no. Time out. What? There's plenty of reasons why people have weekday weddings. It saves them a, a butt ton of money. I think it's totally appropriate and fine if it's small and local and like everyone that is coming is around, you know, like do your thing. But if it's not small and it's not Ooh, local. Ooh, you're making people travel making to your people, Thursday evening wedding. Ooh, you're, and you're, everyone else has to work. Ooh. Well, you're actively preventing this person from making money. Mm-hmm. They, have they have to, to take, take off, off work. work. Thursday right? and probably they have to take off work. And if they decide that maybe they're in a situation with their job or whatever where they can't do that, you're an asshole because you didn't come to my wedding. Sometimes, pe- Yeah, exactly. Sometimes people work years and years and years just to add one vacation day to their allotted vacation days. Yeah. And you're, you're asking for them to take those for your wedding because yeah. you want to save some money. Or whatever. Just I don't get it. I just don't. I don't. I don't, don't even get me started. I think it's a lot. You got me started. Well, and it's not like a, oh, we're just getting married and then we're going to have a dinner. I'm talking to like, Full on here's production. my ceremony on Thursday morning and then the reception's Thursday night. And then you're mad when people leave your wedding early or don't want to like party and have a great time because they're all fucking They have a pitch meeting at work they, tomorrow. Yeah, they have to go to work the next day. They have a pitch meeting. They have a pitch meeting. The head honcho is going to be there mm-hmm. watching the pitch meeting. Right. <clears throat> All right. Last one. The head honcho. Oh, people. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started. 
on people Snapchatting the entire concert that oh. they go to. Shouldn't have got her started. Snapchat is not a concert. Snapchat is not a concert. Snapchat is not a concert. <sighs> I just I, I I I get why people go to concerts and film things on their phone. I get it. I think it's cool for a little bit because then you get to have that memory and yeah. like really it's for you. Yeah. And I understand why people want you know the more aggressive people want to be in the front. They want to get all the the best shots of this person live. And you know if anything ever happened, you'd have all this footage of it. It'd be cool. Yeah. But like I don't I don't fully I'm not completely on board with the standing at a concert and sort of just watching it through your phone. Yeah, that's so weird when people just leave it rolling like i i agree with you i get like maybe it's your favorite song in the set and you wanted to record a clip of it so you can remember yeah, I get, that i like, get some of it totally. or, or even like a picture or something totally. but yeah the people who just leave it rolling and they're like also like seem to not really it be enjoying themselves it's almost like they're pirating a movie they're just like <laughs> you know what i mean like it's like well, what's the point well i get some of it so say you were at a concert and you know you're the biggest fan. Like you want to remember this and where you were standing the whole thing for forever. I totally get it. I do feel like you're missing some of the concert by constantly recording it. Fine, whatever. But I do get the thrill of rewatching it on your phone yeah. or like sharing a little bit of it or whatever. What I don't understand is how you went from having all of those positive things for yourself and then putting the entire thing on fucking Snapchat. To where your story is like, 10 minutes long of just like really, really bad distorted concert audio through an iPhone or even worse than Android. Don't get it. It's really hard to watch them too. I'm not like, oh, sick, dude. That was fucking <clears throat> dope. I'm like. This is how it looks. This is how it sounds no, when I'm watching literally... someone's story who recorded a whole concert. Because <laughs> I'm just skipping every single one. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like the same sound. But I also like. Oh, like many other things, I feel like people Snapchat or Instagram story that they're at a concert because it's them sharing that they're at a concert. Yeah, right? it's like it's the social media. You want to show people what you're up to. Right. Flex. So I, I get I get a little bit of that. And then I feel like everyone has sort of a line where that's over. And that's cool. People that, cross that line. That's though. cool. You oh, went to the concert. Sorry. But that's it. <laughs> I'm happy for you. Yeah. I'm happy that you were front row. But it's all for you. It's also just that so fucking, fucking enough. loud. Like when you watch your Instagram, say you like Instagram story or Snapchat for an entire day. And at the end of the day, you're like, I want to watch my story. See mm -hmm. like what the day was. Usually when you make a long story, something cool happened or mm -hmm. you were excited about something or whatever. And you never really watch it. And you're like, God, this is miserable to watch. Because if you do, then you wouldn't have done it. You wouldn't have posted it because or you a, a it. concert on Snapchat is so loud and so bad to listen to and so not even close to what it's like to be there. Mm -hmm. What's the point? Well, lucky for us, it's almost time for Coachella, so it's time to watch everyone's story like live that. podcast on the main stage at Coachella. Imagine that would be my hell. <laughs> I know. I still like after all these years, I still have no desire to go to Coachella or other large music festivals. I get why people love them. And there's some people that would, you know, spend every last penny that they have. And they can't wait to save. Like, I get it, you know, but yeah. it's just not for me. I just don't, Absolutely. don't want to go. Absolutely would retweet that. But, I mean, being in that crowd of people and like going through just Anxiety City, honestly. I just, just go. And I, yeah, it's like, even if I didn't feel like that about mm -hmm. being in crowds of people, I'm just, yeah, I don't know yeah, how much. But I I'd appreciate be music. I appreciate live music. But on that scale, like, really makes me, it's too much. But I like watching Coachella on, on TV. No, oh. on TV. Well, after they started televising it, it's yeah, so fun they do to watch. It, well, they live stream on YouTube. Yeah, right? I love yeah, watching the live, it. The Coachella live streams are really, really cool. Yeah. Because they're not shot on an iPhone in the crowd. Oh, damn. Get them, me. T. But T. yeah, I, I do like live music, but yeah. not that. That type of venue is speaking of live music. Let's let bam, 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 now to our portion of the show where we shout someone cool out that we found their content to be cool this week. Uh, what's the name of this segment? I don't know. Let's think of a name. Chat. Oh, what should, hi, Carmen. Right on time. What should what should be the name of this little? Anyway, it's like our version of Philip's Philip DeFranco's uh, Today and Awesome sort of. But Jenna has one. Go. Wait, I don't have one. Though. Yeah, you said you were gonna do one. Oh, I like Dylan's new song. Dylan Francis has a new song that I really Dylan's like. Dylan's new song is really good. It's really good. It's called Change Your Mind. That's probably my favorite thing this week. It's a it's a really 
Well, that and Loji sent me a bunch of plants and I can't even... They sent me a fucking philodendron pink princess. That's not content on the internet, though. I've, oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I understand I you're excited, I, can't, I haven't wrapped my hat around it. I literally haven't wrapped my hat around it. It's a very rare plant. Well, it's just... It's not that it's so unbelievably rare. It's just so difficult to get because everyone wants them and they sent me one. Yeah. I, anyways, your turn. Bye, um, Carmen. My favorite piece of content that I found on the internet this week... Comes from a creator that I've been following for a long time, binging with Babish. He <gasps> Julie created, was literally tearing up. Dude, he created a show called Being with Babish, right? And the first episode of the show, he sets out to help out a fan of the show who maybe had fallen on some hard times. And oh my God, I cannot recommend it enough. It is just like so tasteful and genuine and well done. And Andrew binging with Abish is such a creative person. Mm -hmm. You can tell in how he makes his videos that you could, you could just like feel like every bit of love that went in the episode. And they like flew down to Orlando to help out this guy. And it's just like everything about it. It's just like such a great piece of content. I loved it. I can't wait till the next episode. I love seeing people who are super creative, but maybe have found themselves in a little bit of a box branch out into something different. So for him, he branched away from his cooking videos to make this series called being with Babish. And I just like applaud that so much because it, you know, it clearly is like rewarding for him and he made some great shit. So, uh, we'll link those two things below. Um, but yeah, those are our favorite things on the internet Hell this week. you. Carmen, he like knows when the podcast is over and he starts crying. I know. They know the timing of the podcast and the stream. Like when we say goodbye to our friends on, on Discord. Say goodnight. Like, they start flipping out. They start flipping out and they know it's time to go. Anyway, thank guys, you. thank you for tuning in to another podcast. We love you all very much. Hope you have a wonderful week and we'll be you. back here with another episode next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.